For years you've been in darkness, searching for light, searching for hope, searching for a savior.
Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our candlelit service. And whether you're here in the building or whether you're joining us online, you are very welcome this evening. Uh, just to say that the service from this point onwards will run without any introductions at all. So please, when the words appear on the screen and the music starts, then do please stand and sing the carols with us. 
Now, just a heads up, we're singing Silent Night, Holy Night later on in the service. And if you have a phone handy uh, with a torch uh, app on it, then do please feel free to switch it on. Let's fill the building with individual lights. That would be just great. Now, the message tonight has been recorded by our pastor, Sean, but he's had to self-isolate uh, this weekend due to his wife Kathy's positive uh, COVID test result. So we send them and also Joyce our love. But I'm going to open in prayer first, so let's pray together. Gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, you are a merciful God. And right at the beginning of this Christmas week, as the light of your word penetrates our hearts and as we're reminded of the gift of life and the gift of faith and as the glories of the heavenly hosts are echoed in our church building and also in our homes, we want to open ourselves up to your spirit and we want to just with grateful hearts give you thanks. We're very grateful, Lord Jesus, that your story has become our story. And we celebrate your birth to take to heart the wonder of your love, that we may walk in your ways and delight in the centre of your will. And Lord, we just ask for your help this evening to be faithful and gracious and loving and giving and forgiving people. You want us to be that. You want us to reflect the light of Christ in a world that is so dark. So speak to us this evening, we pray, through this time together. And may we all draw closer to you, whether we're here in the building or indeed at home. So may the message of Christmas come truly alive in our hearts to the glory of your name. Amen. In the ancient writings, a savior was prophesied. This would bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And it was written long ago that God would give us a sign. A young girl would conceive, though never having been with a man, and she would give birth to a baby boy. He would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Mother? Father? You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For nothing is impossible with God. I am a servant of the Lord. May everything you have said about me come true.
a young woman says yes to the unimaginable. Her story is not the first, nor the last, when God will ask great things of his people. And when we say yes, it can change everything. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. the angel and the shepherds. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. 
And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born for you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Then the angel, when the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had told, been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them. <laughs> as if, in my experience, there's no such thing as a homing sheep. When they go astray, they stay astray unless we go and find them. And that's what we do up here. Forgotten by most people, it's cold and it's dark and it's cut off. But tonight, I don't want to moan because something has changed. Not so much in my circumstances. We're still here in the night with the sheep, out of sight, <laughs> out of mind. And yet I don't feel alone anymore. I have been noticed. For last night, the darkness ripped open and the sky, this sky, was full of light. I think God wanted to grab our attention. Well, we were certainly grabbed. <laughs> In fact, we were terrified. It was awesome and bright and different and strange. It was glorious. I guess God is like that, isn't he? It unsettled us good and proper. Don't be afraid. That's what they said. God is always saying that. Don't be afraid. I guess it bears repeating because most of us feel scared a lot of the time. That's why I never get frustrated with the sheep, because in some ways I think I'm a lot like them. I need a helping hand, someone to watch over me. Don't be afraid, but come and see what is happening. And so we went. I mean, who wouldn't? And what we found was very ordinary and yet very wonderful. A baby, just as we'd been told, a baby with grateful parents, tired and smiling. And to us, the joy was, well, he had something to say, 
something to add, something which lent the ordinary moment an extraordinary potential. This baby is not just any baby, we said. Let us tell you what we have been told. And that's what we did. (laughs) Now we are back here where we were before, watching. Most people don't think of us. Most people take us for granted or ignore us. But God has seen us. He's let us in on his greatest surprise. We are loved. And that makes all the difference. Oh uh-huh.
is Christus, come and adore Him, and bring this before Him. Joy to the world, worship the Son, this is Christmas, this is Jesus, Emmanuel, here we Savior, we have a Savior. We are no longer lost, cause He has come down for us. We have a Savior, we have a Savior. Sing with me.
sing praise the Lord. The Word, the one from whom and by all things were made, the one who became flesh and lived among us. The Word, the one who spoke the earth into being, who designed each unique intricate snowflake and composed the sweet song of the nightingale. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The Word the one who flung stars into space, who set the planets in, in orbit and breathed life into mankind. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The Word, the Son of God, light of the world, fully God, fully man, our rescuer. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The Word. To all who received him, he gave the right to be called children of God. The word became flesh and lived among us. Oh uh-huh. 
Why? Why did Jesus come to earth? Why forsake the majesty and fellowship of heaven? Exchanging a palace for a stable. Immortal comforts for a feeding trough. And robes of glory for the feeble body of an infant. An unparalleled irony, this supreme, unrivaled nobility experiencing absolute and total humility. Our sovereign God, Emmanuel, as a baby. He didn't come to heap shame upon sinners or to judge and cast out the impious, but to break bread with those called unrighteous. He didn't come to illuminate every mystery of the cosmos or to enlighten the intellectual, but to fulfill the testimony of prophets clothed in rags. He didn't come to elevate a single nation or to advocate a particular political affiliation. He came because he saw you broken in need of salvation. He saw you lost and abandoned, crying out, surrounded by deaf ears, fighting through the tears, but beaten down by the torments of this world. And unable to bear your distress, he renounced his eternal throne, walked the earth, bore the stripes, accepted the nails, and gave up his last breath, so that you could receive the breath of life. Our holy, infinite God beheld your pain, perceived your heart, and determined that your soul was worth dying for. From the manger, to the cross, to the empty tomb, it is all a story of profound love, of a Savior who rescued his children from darkness, of a blameless king who declared that no sacrifice was too great for the sake of his beloved creation. Why did Jesus come to earth? He came for you.
Well, hello everybody and a happy Christmas to you all. You know, sometimes you don't have to say a lot to say a lot, do you? A few words may be all that's needed to say it all. Just one sentence that can stand the test of time. I mean, Mark Twain famously told us, for example, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Thomas Edison is known to have said, there is no substitute for hard work. Walt Disney said, whatever you do, do it well. And Winston Churchill, among other things, declared, the farther backward you can look, the farther forward you're likely to see. Now, whether you agree with these things or not, the fact is that all of those people said a lot without saying a lot, didn't they? Just like the car sticker I once saw that told me, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. (laughs) Yeah, but in this Christmas to remember season, I recall something my old head teacher told us very succinctly in the last Christmas assembly of my school life. And it was this, that if Jesus' coming at Christmas is not the best news you have ever heard in your life, then you cannot truly have understood Christmas at all. And in the brief announcement by the angel to the shepherds on night shift that very first Christmas, we have in just the seven words that I want to focus in on tonight, all we will ever need to know as to why it is the best news ever. A saviour has been born to you. A saviour has been born to you. That is not a lot to say, but it says a lot. You see, God knows our need and he comes in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ into this world to meet our need. You know, not everybody in this world is poor and needs more money. Not everybody in this world is daft and needs a higher education. Not everybody in this world is sick and needs better health care. And not everybody in this world is bored and needs greater motivation. But everyone in this world is a sinner in need of a saviour. And that is what makes Christmas the best news ever. For the good news of great joy is that God has come to us in Jesus so that we might come to him through Jesus. You see, Jesus is the hope we all need, the hope we all need. A saviour has been born to you. Now, I wonder, have you ever failed to qualify for something? Have you ever not been selected for a team? Have you ever been refused entry somewhere? Or have you ever been turned down for a date? Because if you have, then you will surely know by comparison just how great the joy truly is when the news is the very opposite to that. And you did make the qualifying standard and you were named on the team sheet and you did get to go in where you wanted to go in too. And that special date really did take place. And so likewise, it was good news of great joy to shepherds when the angels got to tell them ahead of anyone else knowing at that time, a saviour has been born to you. Because they were probably the last people in the world that you might have expected God to include in his plan of salvation, let alone make them the very first witnesses of it. You know, I went earlier this year to a prize giving at Houndsdown School in Totten, as my grandson had been told in a letter home that he'd won one. Though what he had won, they did not say. So I asked him what he thought he had been put forward for, but he struggled to think of anything that he genuinely felt he was deserving of getting. So imagine the joy then. When it wasn't just one prize along with a healthy Amazon voucher he'd won, but three of them, three of them. I mean, it took a week to wipe the smile off his face. And for his grandfather, very proud grandfather, it still delights to this day. So it's not hard to imagine then, is it, 
how shepherds felt in a world at that time which thought so little of them that they couldn't hold public office and that their word was considered so worthless that they could not even testify in a court of law. I mean, shepherds were on the lowest rung of the social ladder, working seven days a week, which stopped them observing the Sabbath, and were earning far less than minimum wage. Poorly educated, badly treated, truly belittled. Not very many people would pick shepherd for their career path, and doubtless no father would have ever wanted his daughter to marry one either. I mean, and let's be honest, even in nativity plays today, to be given the part of a shepherd is saying loud and clear that Hollywood is not going to come calling very soon and the local paper will not be printing their picture. Yet to shepherds, to shepherds, we're given the hope we all need. A saviour has been born to you. In other words, that Jesus came for the forgotten and Jesus came for the neglected people of this earth. For most of the time, they're the ones who receive him with the greatest joy. No, religious people can be too self-righteous to know their need of a saviour. Rich people can be too self-sufficient to think they have any need of a saviour. And really busy people can be too self-absorbed that they fail to make any time to even consider a saviour. But as the old carol says, in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still, even now, still, the dear Christ enters in. My friend, you may be feeling as unwanted as the Omicron COVID variant, and perhaps as undervalued as many a key worker in this ongoing coronavirus pandemic now does. But the good news of great joy is that a saviour has been born to you. Jesus is the hope we all need. For while there may be nothing extraordinary about good news bringing great joy, I mean, after all, good news brings great joy to somebody, right? Nonetheless, it is something else to say. There is good news of great joy that is for everybody. But Jesus is more than the hope we all need. Jesus is the help we all need too. The help we all need. You see, a saviour, a saviour has been born to you. Jesus wasn't born simply to set us a good example. Jesus wasn't born just to teach us good things. Jesus wasn't born just to go about doing good. Though as he grew and as he lived and as he taught and he did many of his miracles, he certainly never did anything ever that was less than good. But supremely, Jesus was born to be our saviour. A couple of weeks ago now, Kathy and I were at St Mary's Football Stadium, not to watch the Saints play, but to attend a farewell dinner for the golf professional at Bramshaw Golf Club, who, because it's where I play my golf and because he's been there for over 30 years, we were happy to attend and bring our own personal farewell with, to him with. It, it was a gala night and one of the speakers was an ex-member of Bramshaw themselves, somebody called Matthew Letizier. Unfortunately, most of what he told us is not repeatable here. But he did tell us of one time when he was at the zenith of his footballing career and living, up, living just up the road in North Baddersley when a snowstorm hit and his wife at that time asked him to go and get some goods from the local co-op store. Anyway, he did as he was asked to do and he found himself behind this older lady at the checkout till. And when this older lady turned around and noticed him standing behind her in the queue, she told him that he looked very familiar, but she couldn't quite place him. Well, then suddenly it hit her and she started shouting out, 
So everybody in the store, whether they wanted to hear or not, could hear that this man was her bin man. She said, you're my bin man. You're my bin man. She kept shouting it out and Matthew Letizier, being a gentleman, not wanting to draw any more attention to himself or to burst her bubble of false identity, Matthew Letizier, or Le God, as Southampton fans called him, was happy just to let it go and leave her in her ignorance. But then just as the old lady was leaving the shop, she turned back once more and shouted again, he is my bin man. <laughs> he is my bin man. But you know what? He doesn't half look like Matthew Letizia. Eh? <laughs> well, listen, Matthew Letizia was a good football player, but he was neither God nor a bin man. Yet in Jesus, we have both. For as it says, a saviour has been born to you. A saviour who is Christ the Lord. He is God. A saviour who's come at his own expense to empty us of the sin that trashes our lives and leaves us dumped from true relationship with God. For we are all sinners in need of a saviour. And that saviour is Jesus. And I'm glad to be able to say that Jesus is my bin man because Jesus is my saviour. And the reason he looks so much like God is because he is God. God in human flesh. A saviour has been born to you. The question is, has he become your saviour yet? You see, it also says later on in God's message, God made him who knew no sin, that is to say, he had no rubbish of his own to deal with, to be sin for us, to take our bin out, so that we might be made right with God. A saviour has been born to you, one who came to qualify us as fit for heaven, one who came to claim us as his very own, one who came to rescue us from our sin, one who came to redeem us back to God. You know, I found a voucher the other day that gave me 10% off a sleeve of three golf balls. But sadly for me, and my wife doesn't know this, so please don't go posting it on social media, it was past its redemption date. I had missed the opportunity to get that discount. Now that's bad enough, but worse still, when Jesus the Saviour was born and would later die to redeem us, not from 10% of our sin, but from 100% of our sin and 100% of our failure and the very rubbish of our own goodness, which is never able to stand the test of true holiness. And yet we still fail to cash it in. It's little wonder then that the Bible goes on to ask the question, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation as this? Well, not the shepherds, that's for sure. For they knew in going to seek and find Jesus on that first Christmas night and to behold the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world, that he was being born to both seek and to save them. A saviour has been born to you. Jesus is the hope we all need. Jesus is the help we all need. And then finally, to close out this little message tonight, Jesus is the home we all need as well. You see, a saviour has been born to you, has been born to you, which means, as G.K. Chesterton once put it, that God became homeless so that we could find a home. That place of safety and security and serenity that we call home, that place where we can rest in who we are, who we know and what we have and everything we aspire to be. Jesus has been born. It's not just an historical fact, but it's a true display of the very love that made him leave his home so that we could find our home in him. Do you ever wonder why you can't figure out why you're here? Or why there's this deep, lonely feeling that's always there? 
is because we're far away from home. It's because we're distanced from God and far away from the love and the meaning we were wonderfully made by him for, but sin now separates us from. But God loves us too much to lose us. Isn't that wonderful? God loves us too much to lose us. And Christmas is a celebration of the truth that he has been born as his fisherman friend Peter would later state it, to bring us safely home to God. A saviour has been born to you, born in fulfilment of many, many prophecies given over hundreds of years, born through the miraculous conception in a virgin's womb, born into poverty to face heavy persecution, but born nonetheless because God has a home waiting for us a home waiting for us. The moment we are through faith and repentance, born again in Jesus, as he is born in our hearts, and we come truly to experience his forgiveness for our sins and to live in the power of his spirit. I mean, would that not be a Christmas to remember? One where we're truly at home this Christmas because we are now in the one relationship with God that we ourselves were born for. Don't you want that? I know that I do. Then do what the shepherds did. Leave the life that you have been leaving behind you and find your life in Jesus. A saviour has been born to you. These shepherds, remember, watched over flocks that under Jewish law would be needed to satisfy the continuing demand of temple sacrifice. But these shepherds discovered in God's grace, and we praise him for it, a lamb in Jesus, born to die once and for all to bring us home to God. In one way, then, by turning to Jesus, they were doing themselves out of a job, therefore. But in a better way, they were finding their joy in Jesus. Amen. I don't know what it might cost you to turn your life over to Jesus. But whatever it costs, it is nothing to what it cost him to be born to save us. Born to save you. And nothing to the ultimate cost of what it will mean if we don't. Sometimes you don't have to say a lot to say a lot. The angels said it all to shepherds in their own very special Christmas to remember. A saviour has been born to you. And Jesus is the hope we all need. He is the help we all need. And he's the home we all need. And if we too, like these Bethlehem shepherds, want to guarantee ourselves, both now and forever, our very own Christmas to remember, then we need to put our faith and our trust in Jesus, who came to be the saviour that we all need and the saviour that we can all know. God bless you. Have a great Christmas. Look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Would you just bow your heads? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the simple faith of those shepherds that Sean has been speaking about. Those who heard the message and seeing its truth for themselves, shared it with others, just what they'd experienced. And as you have come to us, so we may see in you our help, our home, our hope. And I thank you, Lord, that you're here this evening. You're here in the homes that have tuned in online. You're here in this building. And I pray right now for every need of every person listening. I pray for every aching 
or broken or empty heart. I pray for the life of every person, young or old, that you would be Emmanuel, God with us, to everyone this Christmas. I pray this in Jesus' name and ask that in this holy moment that you would receive now our wonder and our adoration and our praise and just shower this building and the homes who are watching with hope and love. We ask it in the peerless and the precious name of the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to close our service this evening by singing that great hymn where we can join with the hosts of heaven. Hark the herald angels sing. worshipper at Shirley we're going online for the next two weeks now we've decided that because of the Omicron variant it's too risky to come out and so we're going to have all our services from now on through until the 9th of January and on the 9th of January hopefully we'll know and get some guidance from the government as to whether we can meet again for our rededication service so all our uh, services, Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, the first Sunday in January are online. The blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this week, this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you 
and remain with you always. Amen.